Hello, everyone. My name is Cemal Ragelian. I'm the CEO of the Institute of Cancer and Crisis, and you are watching Cancer and Crisis Talks. Today, my guest is Dr. Natalia Verovkina from Ukraine. Dr. Verovkina's expertise lies in the management of breast cancer and soft tissue sarcomas. With a strong background in oncology, she has had extensive training and experience in breast cancer treatment. Additionally, she has actively participated as a sub-investigator in over 15 international phase two and three clinical trials, focusing on different types of cancers, such as nosmal cell lung cancer, colorectal cancer, and gastric cancer. Since 2014, Dr. Verovkina has been involved in basic science and translational research at the Research Department of Chemotherapy of Solid Tumors at the National Cancer Institute in Kiev, Ukraine. Furthermore, she has been appointed as an ESO ambassador in Ukraine since 2020, where from basically we know each other. Also, I want to mention that currently Dr. Verovkina is serving as a visiting assistant professor at the Department of Pathology and Experimental Cancer Therapeutics at the Warren Alpert Medical School Brown University in USA. Dr. Verovkina, thanks a lot for joining us today. So as a doctor based in Ukraine, could you provide an overview of the current state of cancer care in the country and how it has been affected by the ongoing war crisis? Thank you, Gemma, for this question. Uh, in general, the current situation of cancer care uh, was affected uh, due to several factors. It really strongly depends on the time point and of the geographical location. Because the majority of uh, healthcare assistants now it's work properly, and a majority of patients able to receive anti cancer care uh, inside the country. Especially the situation depends on geographical factors such as proximity to the active hostilities uh, and uh, unfortunately presence of uh, uh, patients in the occupied territory. Uh, current status of basic communication such as plumbing is electricity is really affecting operational uh, ability of the facilities. I mean oncological cleaning because it's really strongly depends of time point as you can see and many of us following on the news what's happening uh, from time to time. And especially uh, the situation depends of migration of patients and doctors. I mean internal migration when all these uh, people coming from the occupied territories or territories close to the active hostilities to the more western part of my country. Uh, uh, especially, and all these factors causes a uh, capacity issues and resource limitation. Uh, because shortage of healthcare professional caused by internal and external migration of the doctors, especially nurses, because many of nurses are the moms. They were refugee with the children and many of them stayed in foreign countries. Uh, the next point, what I like to mention, that uh, the capacity of resources, I mean, diagnostic procedures and radiotherapy, and especially uh, medication, uh, I mean, uh, access to basic and advanced medication and surgery. So all these factors are uh, impacting from time to time and location uh, cancer care cancer care patient in my country. But I would like to mention that our healthcare system uh, was not uh, stopped their operation at all from the very first day of the uh, uh, Russian aggression to our country. And um, we working, my colleagues working very hard, and now patients uh, can receive all type of care that were available before the war. So it's really scary. It was really scary to stay at home because from the very first day of war, I sent uh, my son with his grandparents to safe place uh, and returned to Kiev. So I started to work as a doctor after sending my son to safe place. From time to time, we live in hospital because... Uh, Almost nothing was operating because Kiev was under threat of the siege and the very first day of the war. And um, 
uh, we stayed in hospital and patients uh, were, were able to come to receive uh, routine chemotherapy because mm -hmm. very first day pre-planned surgery was not pro was not done because of the constant air sirens in Kiev and um, we just uh, uh, able to provide chemotherapy as a daily on a daily basis so who managed to come to clinic uh, patients received we started from short uh a drug, I mean, zolidronic acid or uh, AC regimen, and then we switched to the most uh, hard regimen. And by the end of the March, we able to provide longer regimen, including iphosphamide and etc. So later, as the situation improved, um, I mean, military situation around the Kiev last year improved. So we started operating as a normal hospital. But the situation changed in Kharkiv, for example, because Kharkiv at the very first day also undergone from severe shelling and active hostilities. So uh, many people uh, flee from the from the Kharkiv to Western region. But uh, what can I tell you regarding my experience? Other experience could be told by the doctor who were overwhelmed with pain patient in the western region of the country because all patients move from the west eastern part of the country to western part of the country. So if we were not overloaded with patients because at that time point, I mean March 22, Kiev was almost empty, uh, but Many patients uh, stayed in Kiev because some were not able to move. Some had uh, disabled parents or relatives; they cannot move with them. So this pa and this patient re and cancer was not waiting. So they were in the need of receiving a. Uh, the uh, therapy and from time to time we see a lot of patients sometimes we're seeing about 100 patients just for the routine chemotherapy that's and, very, very uh, this, yeah yes uh, many colleagues many mine colleagues uh, stayed in some uh, moved to other countries and tried to continue the activity on the western part. Some stayed in the hospital. So I can tell uh, about my personal experience. Other people uh, can talk about what happened in Kharkiv and Dnipro. I can tell what happened in Kiev because uh, at that time point I was in Kiev. Yeah, and for us as doctors, the safety and well-being of our patients is the most important, right? Yes, and from it was real problem um, at the very first time when assessed to pain medicine because for, uh, from the first time it was real um, problem because we really don't know especially in the occupied territories. I mean, at that time point, Irpin and Bucha, where it was occupied, a lot of patients stayed here. And I have no access to no access. cancer care, oh, to pain medication. That's real problem. Yes, it's situation, situative and dynamic. Uh, the same thing happening in the uh, south part of uh, my country when the patient just cut it from the country and they cannot uh, cross the battle front line. So it's really hard situation. And if you just see a situation of one patient, you can realize how hard it might be, uh, especially in the very first day. I remember my patient who started progressing before the war. So at that time point in Kiev, she was old lady uh, living alone. There was no nursing home, no relative, and she started suffering from severe pain. And it took around one week to organize to her because it was new situation. When it's situation more um, routine, it's easier how to assess to this drug, how to talk to the patient. So in Kiev, yes, it was organized the center where the all patient could call. At that time point, it was like cre a crisis reactive center. So patient could call and organize, but we're really lucky in the um, 
doctor, nurses, and operating uh, personnel at that moment. But uh, within weeks, Kiev started to operating as normal as possible at that situation. Thank you very much, Dr. Verovkina. Can you also elaborate a little more? How has the conflict impacted the availability and affordability of cancer medications and therapies in Ukraine? So access to anti-cancer medication is one of the main problem in Ukraine. Basic chemotherapy and some targeted therapies such as uh, trastuzumab, rituximab, some other TKIs uh, have been provided by the national healthcare system. However, even before the war, um, the patient had to pay it out of pocket for the majority of modern drugs, I mean, TKIs and especially immunotherapy. Approximately 60, 80 uh, percent of patients have to pay out of pocket for this medication if they were indicated and prescribed. The situation has worsened uh, because of shortage uh, and break of chain supplies, uh, especially <clears throat> in my country. Uh, many patients uh, have been able to receive modern uh, uh, therapy in clinical trials. Unfortunately, VAR really affected this area and this uh, source of access of modern drug now is almost uh, disappeared because we lacking of new clinical trial. Uh, but uh, we start to renew this situation because this year of the war shown that the investigators and clinics which are not close to the active hostility really actively uh, serving and all the patients who stayed in Ukraine will be able to continue treatment uh, in the uh, trial because they were transferred to other clinical centers so it was really huge coordinated efforts uh, to uh, care of this patient. Even uh, it was um, developed the program of running clinical trials in crisis. So we are working, my colleagues in, in my country, we are really working to renovate and uh, start to attracting sponsor to co convince them that we are a reliable partner because uh, the first uh, and the main point is the well-being and safety of our patients and especially so we can provide and starting to convince sponsor that uh, we clinical trial will be conducted at least at the part of the country now so uh, we're really uh, working on uh, re reinvigorating uh, this area because uh, the, the clinical trials that was uh, ongoing at the time when the war happened uh, really was uh, not close at all because patient and study drug was uh, transferred accordingly to the sponsor instruction and a patient were trans and, and they were able to continue their treatment in clinical trials because it's really Actually, important. Yeah. So, but during this period of war crisis, are there any specific programs in place to support cancer patients and provide them with necessary care during this difficult time period for all of you? There is, uh, if you mean in my country, there is uh, a lot of dedicated program depending on the uh, group of patient uh, and uh, in the very first day of the war, we impressed that all pharmaceutical companies uh, give uh, for free all the pharmaceutical drug, I mean immunotherapy, targeted therapy that were at the stock inside the country at that very moment, the patients receive them for free. Then uh, oh, Ukraine received a lot of humanitarian aid. And we also had our stock. And now I'm talking about the first day of the conflict. Now uh, our system is, oper is operating uh, we as... Mm, I would say uh, routinely. So patient can uh, receive 
basic chemotherapeutic all drug that are listed in the national uh, drug uh, list as essential. So these drugs are provided, but not all that really required for modern and effective cancer care. I see. Thank you, Dr. Verovkina. So we talked about all these national support programs, but are there any collaborations or partnerships with international organizations or neighboring countries to enhance cancer care services during this difficult period? Yes, from the very first day, we received unprecedented support from the many countries and professional organizations, patient advocacy organizations also were actively involved. Uh, the most promising, first of all, WHO, uh, in collaboration of Ministry of Health of Ukraine, uh, and in collaboration uh, with refugee hosting countries, uh, uh, really uh uh, ensured and organized medical evacuation for many patients, uh, especially uh, pedi in pediatric oncology area. Uh, so if you if mention the professional organization, I would say that a European Cancer Organization and American Society of Clinical Oncology created special network uh, uh, which uh, calls impact of the war in Ukraine on cancer include uh, the it's include this network includes but not limited of uh, European Cancer Organization, European Society of Medical Oncologists, Astro. Uh, European Oncology Nursing Societies and Patient Advocacy Groups in European, in European Cancer Organization. So uh, this includes many, many, uh, many, many activities which helps our patient. That means that in coordination with Ministry of Health, uh, we have now um, medical evacuation of patient, uh, which uh, they which cannot access for specialized clinical care or some uh, modern drug that are not available. So we have a dedicated group of professional who organizing transportation to European clinic that uh, agreed to treat patient from Ukraine. The first. Um, so the second is the majority of uh, professional organization providing support in training of the Ukrainian doctors. So now I am the person who having advantages of this collaboration. So I really received uh, this scholarship for displaced scholar and I'm honored to be at Brown University to continue uh, my research. So it's really, really honor. I really honored to be there and and when I come back to my country, I will do my best to implement received knowledge at a uh, dependent situation. Yeah, I, I hope it will be possible in my country. So my next question is uh, like uh, a bit uh, different from the topic. It's more like related to research and science. I know that it's early to assess, but did you notice any significant changes in the types or prevalence of cancers observed in the affected regions? Mm -hmm. Currently, uh... In my country, National Cancer Institute operates as usual. So we we uh, have National Cancer Register, and it's registering all the. Uh, types of cancer that receiving. We cannot access impact uh, of ongoing war on cancer incidence and mortality. Uh, yes, why? Because of um, the need, we need epidemiology study to uh, estimate the short, medium and long term impact on pollution of the huge territory where the active hostility have been taking place. In particular pollution of water and soil by toxic substances from incoming and exploding missiles, air bombs, and air to release shells. And uh, 
the territory was really huge in my country. This is one point. The second point is migration, which also causing the differences because many women uh, uh, leave uh, the country. So the, it will, since breast cancer is the first cancer in most common cancer in women in the world and in Ukraine also, we see some uh, changes, but uh, it's not significant. We cannot assess this impact because uh some women return some not so it's very early to talk to this this is the first point and the second point uh presence in occupied territories for example uh sometimes delay uh, uh access to cancer care so we really see the patient who come uh, in the later stages because of the objective uh, uh, because of the situation so this is really very early time point but this is hot topic within um, upcoming year and we really should focus research on these thank you very much dr verovkina and uh, like in short term so the main differences are associated with migration as you mentioned Yes, and it's early to assess, right? We need more time and more retros like retrospective studies yes, to understand and the real impact of war. Yes, Ukraine. we will see. Yes, we will see the effect in the upcoming years. So yeah. now it's really yeah. too early, and especially uh, we are not receiving whole situation because uh, we are uh, not receiving information from the occupied territories. So. We also adjusting the uh, these uh, numbers to this situation. Okay, thank you. And uh, like in conclusion, I want to ask: What are the most pressing needs and priorities for improving cancer care in Ukraine during the ongoing war crisis? Like in, so, currently our healthcare system uh, continue despite this ongoing conflict. Our uh, healthcare system undergoing con undergoing continuing reforming, uh, and most pressing, uh, I would say, improve access to anti cancer medication. Uh, access to diagnostic procedures and radiotherapy and surgery. And from my point of view, access to modern clinical trials is one of the most important factor of the access uh, for the modern uh, cancer therapy, not only in countries in the middle and low income countries and even in very well developed countries. So this is one of the most important 